Hello guys and gals, Buffalo here. Welcome back to the range. I've been gone for a little bit. I was gone for about eight days. We, we stayed about eight days down in Florida. Uh, done some, had some fun on the beach and uh, tucked the kids and done some different things. Just, just had a little family vacation. We hadn't had one in about seven years. So uh, it was a little bit overdue. Really enjoyed it. Had a great time. Got some relaxation in, turned the alarm clock off i didn't have to live by the clock while i was down there and uh, this it was a good break but i'm back and i'm it actually feels good to be back i'm glad to be back on the range not that i didn't enjoy my vacation i did i wish it could have lasted longer but now that i'm back i'm glad to be back on the range i've done a video a couple of couple of weeks ago and tested the winchester silver tip 22 long rifle self-defense ammunition into a bare block of clear ballistics gel and i got a lot of comments in that video that i should have tested the federal punch ammunition so that's what i'm going to do today i've actually still got that same gel block that i shot the winchester silver tips into so we're going to shoot the federal punch into that same gel block so you guys can see them side by side see how they compare side by side so the Federal Punch, I'll link this video in the description if you guys want to check it out. But we're going to focus on the Federal Punch now in this video. This is a 29 grain flat nose bullet. Has a advertised velocity of 1,070 feet per second. And they achieve that out of a 2 inch barrel. So uh, pretty fast coming out of a 2 inch barrel and of course... The 29 grain bullet is a light for caliber bullet and that's how they achieve that velocity now we're going to be shooting it from the three inch barreled ruger lcrx today and if there's still room in the gel block afterward and i think i can squeeze it in we'll also shoot one from a 16 inch barreled rifle like we did with the winchester silver tip so i'll show you guys this gel block and we'll go ahead and get started so here's a look at this gel block. It has been shot several times. This shot and this shot were out of the revolver, the three inch Ruger LCRX. And then these shots on this side were out of the rifle. But I think I've got plenty of room there in the middle. You can see there's no wound tracks in the middle of the block. So I think I've got plenty of room here in the middle to try to put a couple of those federal punch bullets so we can do some comparisons. You can see how that Winchester silver tip explodes there up on entry and breaks into four pieces. Three don't go very deep, but that fourth piece penetrates to about 13 inches. Then that one on back and behind it there is a CCI Velocitor out of that same revolver. So I'll set this up we'll put a federal punch hopefully right in here then that'll leave me room to put another one out of the rifle down in here somewhere i almost forgot to show you guys an up close of this cartridge so here it is it's a nickel plated case and bullet the nickel plating is supposed to help with corrosion and with feeding you can see the flat nose it's a flat nose bullet that's about all there is to see. All right, I've got my cartridge. Let's give this a shot, literally. Well, let's see what we got here. 1,238 feet per second on the chronograph. I can't believe that thing worked. Chronograph's been giving me a lot of problems lately. But check this out. Right here's the wound tract we're looking at. Right on through and out the back side of a 16 inch gel block. 
So we got better penetration than the Winchester Silver Tip and the CCI Velocitor out of that Federal Punch. How much penetration? I don't know. I couldn't imagine it being much more than 16 inches. So I went and got another gel block. This one was out of the melt pile. I was about to melt some of these down anyway. It's already been shot, but there's a lot of room in here where it hasn't been shot. We should easily tell how far the Federal Punch is penetrating, if indeed it goes into the second block this time. Maybe it was just a fluke the first time. But I've got everything lined up. I've got them made it together pretty good here where there's no gap. Got a stick propping this one up so that the mating surfaces are the same here. So let's take another shot and see how far that punch is penetrating. Federal punch from a three inch revolver, part two. All right, so that's interesting. We got 1189 feet per second this time. And we caught our bullet in the first block, so I went and got that second block for nothing, which I kind of thought that might happen. If we look at where I hit, be this one right here, you can see those wound channels. Just straightforward hole punch here. Nothing much to see as far as temporary wound cavities or anything like that. Did get a little bit in here, but pretty much just a hole punch is all you're looking at. And there's our bullet. No expansion. The bullet is facing backwards. It's facing, it's pointing tail first into the block. So it did uh, destabilize and flip around backwards in there in the block. Looks like we got about 14 inches or so of penetration. Uh, somebody in my other videos in the comments was talking about I'm measuring the bullet depth, not the actual penetration. You can see these bullets do bounce back a little. You can see the wound channel in there, but I'm just measuring to the bullet. I'm not even being really exact on these. That looks like about 14 inches, so that's what I'm gonna call it. So, let's fire one out of the rifle and see what it looks like. All right, I've got one loaded up here in the magazine of the Smith & Wesson M&P 1522. 16 inch barrel. Let's see, pull that stock out a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna have to do that one again. I was trying to make sure I was clearing my chronograph and I shot down into the gel block and it exited the bottom of the block. We did get 1,581 feet per second. So we do have a reading just in case this it doesn't read this time. So that's good. Let's try this again. Okay, so that time we got 1,623 feet per second. And as usual, with the higher velocity, we get a little less penetration. It's this channel right here. You can see there's a little bit of a temporary wound channel this time where there was none with that other shot. This is that other shot with the revolver. This is with the rifle. You can see that wound channel opened up. That tells me that that bullet has mushroomed. And if we follow that track down, 
you can see that bullet has indeed mushroomed. So there's our rifle. And I've got the revolver covered up with the tape measure. There's the revolver. We got about 12 and a half inches of penetration with the rifle. Again, and there's another wound track. From this angle, you can see another wound channel above it. But you can see if you look closely, if I can get a better angle on that. There we go. That the bullet does penetrate a little farther and then bounces back. But I'm not worried about that. Got about 12 and a half inches of penetration. And with the revolver, we got about 14 inches. But with the revolver, we didn't get any expansion. So we traded penetration and sacrificed some expansion that we would get out of the rifle. So it does mushroom out of a longer barrel, but not out of the three inch revolver. All right, so that was pretty interesting. This does seem to give good penetration, especially out of that revolver. So, and penetration, let's face it, when you're talking about such a small round as the 22 long rifle, penetration is gonna be king on something like that. But that first shot threw me off because it went all the way through the block. Then I shot it out of the revolver again and the rifle and neither one of those went through. So to add further confusion to this video, after I shut the cameras down, I went over here and from the same spot fired four more shots out of the revolver since those blocks are ready to be melted down anyway. Uh, didn't need to save them for anything else. I went ahead and fired four more shots and <laughs> got some interesting results. I just wanted to see if another one would go all the way through that 16 inch block again. One of them uh, did, it went 17 inches. Uh, it went 16 inches through the first block and then an inch into the second block. Then the other went more than 22 inches. It went all the way through both blocks I had set up. So this ammo is very inconsistent, but it does offer, even on the, the low penetration end, you're still getting good penetration with it, at least for 22 LR round. But on the upper end, it's penetrating very deep into the gel box. So I'll grab the other camera here and show you what I'm talking about. All right, so I went back there and shot from the same spot and fired four more rounds into the block. You can see the blocks full of tracks now. One of them, one of those four went about an inch into the second block here and another one zipped you can see that track here zipped straight out the back of the second block so that's more than 22 inches of penetration so looking at this it appears that some of the rounds start tumbling as soon as they hit the gel and they'll shed some energy that way and not penetrate as deep Yet some of the other rounds are staying true. That way they're not shedding nearly as much energy and they're able to penetrate really deeply through the blocks. All right, so that's gonna be my video on this Federal Punch 22 Long Rifle Self-Defense Ammunition. It did give good penetration and, and at least in one case there, maybe a little over penetration, uh, you know, it went beyond 22 inches, and I heard it hit the steel plate, which is 15 yards farther down range than the gel block, and it, it rung that plate pretty good when I shot it. So I went down there and tried to find a piece of the bullet, but I couldn't. But that's going to be it for today, and I'll talk with you guys again soon.